So now I'm going to move on to integrity. We're going to look at the probably one of the key features about ZFS is the integrity of the data and how it maintains that integrity. Um, stuff you'll read on the internet, there's been arguments about whether you should use error checking memory on the system. I would argue that I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember Parity RAM um, back in the 80s. Um, it started disappearing, I think, in the mid 90s. I think it was a way for the chip manufacturers to save a bit of money. They only had to um, create chips with 8 bits per byte, if you like, instead of 9 bits. Um, so we lost the facility for early warnings that memory was failing. Now there is no warning un until the system crashes or you get corruption on your data files and you wonder why you, your letter from your auntie Edith won't open, your email from your auntie Edith. Um, so uh, yeah, from a personal point of view, I don't think that sort of detection should have disappeared anyway. It makes sense that you've got a file system that can detect and correct errors that you should have RAM that detects and correct errors. So I go along with people who say, yes, you should have ECC RAM. It, it reduces the potential for errors along the data path. If you imagine, imagine the CPU sending a signal to the disk controller to read off, you know, 10 megabytes and dump them into memory, you want that transfer from the disk through the disk controller um, into memory to be as perfect as possible. Yes, it might get corrupted on disk controller, but you're reducing the chances of that data arriving in the memory corrupted because the memory is checking itself as well. Um, so yes, in theory, if you're maybe not, maybe not for a desktop so much, but certainly if you're running a server, like a file server or backup server, you probably do want a machine with ECC. It's extra money well spent to. Um, uh, you know, get a machine that can support, a motherboard that can support ECC and the extra cost of ECC RAM. This machine hasn't got it saying that because it's just an old machine that I've cobbled together for these demonstration. But um, yeah, normally, normally I would do. And like I say, maybe, maybe for a desktop, not as important perhaps, although you may want to consider it depending on how paranoid you are. So what I'm going to do now is to just take a look to see what I've got here. I'm going to destroy this one. And I'm going to create a new one. New pool. I'm going to call it test again. And I'm going to use the file system because I want to fill this up quickly. So Z pool status, just check it, there it is. ZFS list. So you can see we've got a pool, it's just under well just yeah, just under a gigabyte because that's the size of the file. And I'm gonna create a file system for us to use or a data set to use the ZFS terminology. I'll call it file system this time. So there it is, that's created. You can see it by default it's taken up 24K. That might change, no it hasn't. But you notice the pool data has gone up. Maybe it's just stored something about the file system. And I'm going to go back to, I'm gonna change the ownership of this. Um, so this is test. File system, I can give ownership to Kernatex. And I'm going to go to the Kernatex user. Um, and I'm going to create some more dummy files on here. Actually, what I might use, let's just copy some files from the user. And copy them here. Let's do minus AX. So that's copied in the background. 
And what I'll do back on here is just do a Z port stat five. And we'll just monitor this again. We'll just see it slowing down again. So it's doing 18 and a half meg. So this is real files now. It's not just dummy files that I've created. It's copying it from my root file system, which is separate from the ZFS file system. So it's disk to disk. Should be relatively fast. You can see quite quickly it's starting to slow down a bit now. Could be the small files. Can't read them at the moment. Did do a V flag. Um, yeah, it looks like it's slowing. Oh no, it's varying actually. So it could be lots of small files. Um, while that's running, what I'm going to try and do, if I can, is to. Um, emulate a bit being flipped on the disk um, now it might work it might not work it depends on whether I can change a bit on this disk well the file that's actually in use so I'm not sure if it's going to work but I'm going to have a poke around to see if I can get it to work so my in file is going to be disk one. I want to skip to about uh, I don't know, say 123 meg. What size one? Count it was one. And what I'm going to do is to just read what bytes there. So I've got a letter T there at the moment. It's still going. It hasn't filled up properly yet. Right, okay, it's just about full actually. Look, it's it's 12 megs. So if I just follow this a little bit longer. So this disk is really thrashing now because it's trying its best to find space where there's only 12 meg left. So I'm going to wait for this to actually, um, yeah, there it is. It's, it's, it's actually filled as much of it as it can now. So these operations just go to zero as the cache flushes. Yep, yeah, it's settled now. Yeah, there's only 128k left on there, so I'm pretty certain that disk is full. So if I just rerun this command again. Uh, yeah, it's still a T, so... That I'm hoping that's going to be a bit of real data. What I'm going to do is try and flip that. So at the moment in hex, that number 74. So if I increase that by one, that will make it an odd number. So that will change the last bit in that in that um, byte that's stored there. So that will be 75. So what I'm going to do is try and write that so a T so U is the next letter in the alphabet that will be the odd number equivalent if you like 75 and I'm going to pipe that into DD and just put these commands in so that I can just change this one bit in that file without affecting the rest of it just to show how ZFS that was one two three meg before wasn't it yeah just to see how ZFS can pick up on just one single bit change so let's see that was a seek isn't it yeah so let's, let's change one record. Let's read it back. Yeah, it's gone to 75 now, that one. So that's that's what I wanted to happen. It's changed the byte, that one byte that I've written by one bit, just altered one bit. So what I can do now, if I do Zeppel status, according to this, there's no known data errors. One of the recommendations with ZFS is that you do something called a scrub on your disks regularly and for consumer grade um, drives, so that's the type of drives that you know, most people would use in their desktops, 
Um, they tend to come with two to three year guarantees, although not always true. Um, they're the cheaper drives you buy. The recommendation is that you scrub once a week, so that's quite onerous to, especially if you've got quite a lot of space, it's quite onerous to scrub regularly. With enterprise class drives, so these are the type of data center drives, um, I think I'm probably right in saying is they all come with five years guarantee, these ones, and they cost a little bit more, tend to have different names, for example, the Hitachi one, or what were Hitachi are now, Western Digital, um, have names like Ultra Star, whereas the desktop ones have names like uh, Desk Star. Um, other manufacturers have different names uh, for their product lines. The reason why I know about Hitachi is because they're the ones I use, prefer to use. Um, so it's worth thinking about that if you're looking to set up a server and you are serious about having decent drives and you don't want to be scrubbing every week to look at the um, the enterprise class drives um, because they're more reliable they've got longer warranties um, you, you can rely on them and not have to scrub as often but it's one thing you have to do regularly to just check that your discs aren't starting to cause problems and to initiate a scrub we use the scrub commands with zpool and you have to specify the pool name and it starts the scrub. So if I start doing simple status, well, straight away before it's um, even finished actually, in fact, it, it didn't get very well. It's, it's detected the error. Um, so it's warned us, restore the file in question if possible, otherwise restore the entire pool from backup. Well, Oh, and also we can do minus V to see what the file is affected. And you can see there's one of the files that we copied from the user directory, openjpeg.h. Um, well, it's a text file and we modified one of the letters. So I assume we wouldn't be able to detect the difference unless we examined the um, file in question carefully. I'm not sure if it will be immediately obvious. Um, we can have a look just out of interest. Okay, let's do a VI. Yeah, it's going to be quite a big um, file there, actually. I mean, I suppose we could look for all the Vs and look for spelling mistakes. Don't know how many of these will be. Let's do this a better way. Let's see. Oh, there is a lot there. Um, how many lines are there? 177. Might be able to get away with yeah I might just be able to see this sub level just gonna quickly scan down see if I can see an obvious mistake where something should have been a T and it's now a V Okay, I know an even better way actually. Let's do a diff on that file with the original. Oh, interesting. So maybe the change is in the metadata then. So there's even more... Um, 
subtle this this error that's been we've we created that's been detected it hasn't actually affected the file contents but it's actually affected something about the metadata of the file itself and as I say there's no way of um, recovering this data now we've got unless you've got a backup there's no redundancy on this on this pool um, that we can um, resolve this issue um, you know we could try and scrub again but all it will do is it will just report the same error and you can see it's not even bothering after three seconds it's just given up it should take a lot longer than that um, the only thing we could do possibly to get rid of this I don't know if it will work is to remove that file and that deletes it from the system because the scrub only checks allocated space where your data is what's the point in checking space where you haven't got any data so if I do Zeppel scrub, no, it's found some more. Oh no, it's the old ones. Uh, let's do Zeppel's uh, clear to clear the errors, like it says on test. So it's cleared the errors. Let's try another scrub. And yeah, it's running now. Yeah, so now it's it's um, oh, it looks like the whole scrub in a gig, <laughs> one gigabyte took three seconds. So it's quite a good rate. Yeah, it's going about 250 megs per second. So that's quite a rate it's going at. Um, yeah, so you can see that file now it's deleted. The error where the error was with that file, whether it was in the metadata or whether it was in the contents itself. It's not on the disk anymore, so now it can't find the error. But it could mean that disk has still got an error. It's just not got a file that's on the place where that error was. So if I copy that back, that file, let's do it here. Let's CP. into um, forward slash test so I'll put that file back all right it's still not allow us to write it it's not happy um, it could be that the history is taken up a bit of space now because we've done some functions if I do Zeppel history on test you'll see it stores when we do scrubs and clear. So every operation we do on the pool, or the, well, the file system as well, because that is part of the pool gets logged. Um, and what the scrub does specifically is it reads the data blocks, checks the checksums, and it goes all the way up that tree. If you remember from the introduction, the Merkle tree, so every part of the tree gets checked, the data gets validated, the metadata gets validated against the data that was read. And um, anytime there's an error, it gets flagged up like we've seen. If there's redundancy in the pool, it'll, uh, yes, it immediately starts to repair the, the file system um, using the good data. So I say the only way we can um, uh, get around this problem is to use redundancy in our situation here we haven't got any redundancy so all the data is lost or the, or the system has now corrupt we've lost a file um, in fact I, purely because of the fact that the disk is full I can't even restore the file because the disk is full so that's another reason not to fill up the disk um, so what we have to do is to use um, redundancy which is part of the main feature of ZFS that has got redundancy built in so that when the um, error checking has found the integrity is not of the files is not what it should be it can fall back to redundancy to repair any errors that it finds.